Hey kids, Dean, and this is the Crypto the Wonder Dog Show. There, uh, there's often times whenever we we uh, go out in the community and we talk to people about cryptocurrency, and it seems like uh, we just said blah, 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 blah. A lot of people don't know what the heck a cryptocurrency is. Um, so I was asked by a couple people to do a do a quick little show on what is a cryptocurrency. Now you know that I do a lot of stuff with uh, Christian Kamir over at Susney Capital, and, and he. He's a very brilliant, bright guy that he, he does a lot of uh, training for the for the kids. And uh, we did a show on Blockchain 101, uh, what is a wallet, what is um, exchange, um, and a couple other shows. But uh, one we haven't covered is cryptocurrency. So I, thought I'd, I, thought I'd, I thought I'd tackle this on my own. I, I, I have a show on cryptocurrency, so I thought, what the hell, maybe I, maybe I should just do this and, uh, and bring it to you. And uh, you give me your feedback. Let me, let me know how. Let me know what you think. Um, so the the the, uh, the first place that uh, people go, <laughs> including myself, uh, Google. Let's let's Google it. Google. Uh, what the hell is a cryptocurrency? So the first thing I brought up was uh, was Google, and it says a digital currency in which encryption techniques are used to regulate the generation of units of currency and verify the transfer of funds operating uh, independently of a central bank. So that was the first place. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we talk about decentralization um, and uh, that's why it says operating independently of a sep- of a central bank. So everyone is in control and no one's in control a cryptocurrency is a digital asset designed to work as a medium of exchange that uses strong cryptography to secure financial transactions control the creation of additional units and verify the transfer of assets cryptocurrencies are a kind of digital currency virtual currency or alternative currency uh the next place obviously would uh, would be um wikipedia and uh i think i've heard something about a uh uh wikipedia for crypto i don't know maybe, maybe i was just dreaming that i don't know um so uh when you go to go to wikipedia uh a cryptocurrency or cryptocurrency they've got it separated if you're listening to this Uh, is a digital asset designed to work as a medium of exchange. I've already said all this. Uh, Bitcoin, first released as open source software in 2009, generally considered the first decentralized cryptocurrency. Since the release of Bitcoin, over 4,000 altcoins, alternative variants of Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, have been created. Um, Then... Then, so uh, a little doing some more research, I came across bitdegree.org, um, B-I-T-D-E-G-R-E-E dot org. And it says, what is a cryptocurrency? Your complete ABCs to cryptocurrency. Um, this is created on August 30th, just really recently by a guy named Ray King. It's a 15-minute read, so uh, we'll see if it takes 15 minutes. Welcome to my complete beginner's guide of what is cryptocurrency. Uh, The short and easy answer to the question is that cryptocurrency is decentralized digital money. But what exactly does that mean and how does it work? In this guide, or in this read, (laughs) I will answer all the questions you have about cryptocurrency. Probably not all the questions, but uh, he claims he's going to anyway. I'm going to tell you when it was invented, um, how it works, and why it's going to be important in the future. Now realize that it's going to be important in the future. Um, It's very important now, but it's going to be more important in the future. Uh, By the end of this guide, you'll be able to answer the question, what is cryptocurrency for yourself? The world of cryptocurrency moves fast, so there's no time to waste. And uh, let's, let's get started. When I hear the word, I look up its definition in my dictionary. Cryptocurrency is a new word for most people. So let's, uh, let's write up crypto definition. Uh, so if you're watching this, you can kind of see a little, uh, how does cryptocurrency work? You'll see a miner uh, up at the top and a transaction, transaction, one goes to the miner's PC and one goes to the Bitcoin. Um, there's a write hash 
and a reward. So um, first thing we'll talk about is mining. Mining, miners uh, try to solve the mathematical puzzles uh, first to place the next block on the blockchain and claim a reward. Uh, an exchange. Exchange is a business, usually a website, where you can buy, sell, or trade cryptocurrencies. A wallet, uh, cryptocurrency wallets are a software program. It's not actual leather. Um, that uh, wallets are a software program that store public and private keys and enable users to send and receive digital currency and monitor their balance. Now, you know that uh, um, I was going to do a show a while back on the Trezor, and then this is the this is the Model T that I got, um, and uh, the video that I did dug on it uh, kind of kind of fell apart. But this is the Trezor, um, and it came with this cool little handy dandy um, sticky plate that uh, you know it, it uh, it's a magnet you stick somewhere, and then your cryptocurrency wallet. This is a hardware wallet. So this is the the safe place to store your coins. So this is a Trezor. Uh, I've actually never used it yet because I don't currently hold a whole lot of crypto. So uh, it was really, it's really nice. They, they were really cool to send this to me, uh, to mention them a few times on the show. And you can see I've got, uh, I've got a Trezor sticker. Right there. Uh, if you, can you see that? Good. All right. So the Trezor is a wallet, a uh, hardware wallet. Uh, this is the cryptocurrency hardware wallet Model T. Can you read that, kids? Um, I can barely read that. Wow. But I wear glasses, too. Okay. Um, back to your education. Let's go back to, uh, back to the web here. Um, definition, crypto definition. Okay, below is six, a list of six uh, things that cryptocurrencies must be in order to be called a cryptocurrency. It's digital. Number one, digital. It's not coin. I know you've seen a lot of pictures of Bitcoin. It's this little gold coin. That's not actually a Bitcoin. It's just a representation. Um, only exists on computers. There are no coins and no notes. There are no reserves for crypto in Fort Knox or the Bank of England. <sighs> That being said, I have seen, um, I've seen banknotes now <laughs> that it's a Bitcoin note. Uh, don't know much about it. I have seen it. Uh, I know there aren't any coins, but I did see the notes. I did see some uh, prepaid Bitcoin cards, like a hundred, hundred or one Bitcoin or I don't know. Anyway. Um, I've seen that before, so that I don't know if that's true right there, but it is the, the actual money. But you, you, you think about it. Go go to uh, you have an ATM card. Um, that's digital money too. It's not a cryptocurrency, but it's digital money because you know you've got digital money in the bank. Um, a lot of times you don't even see cash. It's very getting getting to be a rare 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 animal out in the wild. Decentralized cryptocurrencies don't have to uh, don't have a central computer or server. They are distributed across a network of typical thousands of computers. Networks without a central server are called decentralized networks, peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, you've heard of, uh, well, you probably heard of Napster back in the day. Um, cryptocurrencies are passed from person to person online. Users don't deal with each other through banks, PayPal, or Facebook. I didn't know Facebook was a um, form of moving money they deal with each other directly banks paypal and facebook are all trusted <laughs> third party they actually aren't i don't think facebook is no longer trusted that's uh, that's pretty funny uh there are no trusted uh there are no trusted third party uh third parties in cryptocurrency note they are called trusted third parties because users have to trust them with their personal information in order to use their services. For example, we trust the bank with our money and we trust Facebook with our holiday photos. No, we don't. Uh, pseudonyms. That means you don't have to give any personal information to own or use cryptocurrency. There are no rules about who can use or own cryptocurrency. It's like posting on a website like 
4 chan. I don't really know what 4 chan is. I'm not going to go there. Trustless. No trusted third parties means that users don't have to trust the system for it to work. Users are in complete control of their money and information at all times. Encrypted. Users uh, have a special code uh, which they um, store their, uh, which stop their information from being accessed by others. Uh, this is called crypto cryptography, or cryptography, as it's as it's phonetically spelled, uh, and it's nearly impossible to hack. Nearly impossible, and uh, we know that it's nearly impossible because uh, John McAfee was hacked. Uh, it's also where the crypto part of the crypto definition comes from. Crypto means hidden. Uh, when information is hidden with cryptography, it is encrypted. Uh, global countries have their own cryptocurrencies called fiat, or not, sorry, uh, global currency, uh, let's start over again, global. Countries have their own currency called fiat currencies, standing, uh, sending fiat currencies around the world is difficult. Uh, cryptocurrencies can be sent all over the world easily. Cryptocurrencies are currently without borders. Uh, the crypto defin uh, definition is a great start, but you'll, uh, you're uh, still a long way from understanding cryptocurrency. Next, I want to tell you when cryptocurrency was created and why. I'll also answer the question, what is cryptocurrency trying to achieve? The, the origin of cryptocurrency in the early 1990s, most people were still struggling to understand the internet. However, uh, there were some very clever spoke, uh, folks who had already realized the power, powerful tool that it is. Some of these clever folks called cipher, cypherpunks? Is that real? Cypher? I thought it was cyberpunks. Uh, it's just me. Although uh, that government, uh, oh wait, though, oh, <laughs> some of these clever folks called cypherpunks thought that governments and corporations had too much power over our lives. They wanted to use the internet to give people the world more freedom. Oh, people of the world more freedom. Using cryptography, uh, cypherpunks wanted to allow users of the internet to have more control over their money and information. As uh, you can tell, the cypherpunks didn't like trusted third parties at all. Uh, at, the type of, at the top of cypherpunk to-do list was digital cash, or digicash and cybercash, uh, were both attempts to create digital money systems. Uh, they both had some of the six things needed to be cryptocurrencies, but neither of them, but neither had all of them. And by the end of the 90s, both had failed. Uh, the world would have to wait until 2009 before its first fully decentralized digital cash system was created. Its creator has since f has seen the failure of cypherpunks and thought that he could do better. Uh, their name or his name was Satoshi Nakamoto and the creation was called Bitcoin. Now understanding cryptocurrency means first understanding Bitcoin. So but uh, then I'll go back to uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. Um, I, I don't know if anybody even really knows who he is. I mean, I'm sure somebody knows who he is. Uh, but it's it's kind of a mystery, right? Um, he's kind of a hidden guy. I don't know if, he, if he's dead, if he's a uh, holdout somewhere. Um, could be your next door neighbor. But uh, no, one, no one really knows where he is. Uh, no one... Uh, no one knows who, who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Could be a man or a woman or even a group of people. Satoshi Nakamoto uh, only ever spoke on crypto uh, forums through emails. In late 2008, uh, Nakamoto published the Bitcoin white paper. This was a description of what Bitcoin is and how it would work. It became the model for how other cryptocurrencies were designed in the future. And I guess that's why a lot of people are creating white papers when they do an ICO. In late 2000, uh, let's see, in January, in January 12th, oh, on January 12th, 2009, Satoshi Nakamoto made the first Bitcoin transaction. They sent 10 Bitcoins to a coder named Hal Finney. By 2011, Satoshi Nakamoto was gone. What they, what they left behind 
was the world's first cryptocurrency. Bitcoin became more popular amongst users who saw how important it could become. In April 2011, one Bitcoin was worth one dollar. By December of 2017, one Bitcoin was worth more than 20,000 US dollars. Today, the price has gone uh, gone down, and uh, I think uh, at the time of this recording, it's sitting somewhere around $6,300 maybe. Uh, at the time he wrote this was $7,500, which was last week, and it was still still a pretty good return, right? Um, interesting fact, in 2010, a programmer bought two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin. Uh, by today's means, that would be probably in the $30 million price. Uh, bet he wish he could bring that transaction back. Could do a refund on that. So Bitcoin has succeeded where other digital cash systems have failed, but why? What is cryptocurrency doing differently? Uh, the thing that makes cryptocurrency different from fiat currencies and other attempts to uh, become uh, digital cash is blockchain technology. And I'm sure some of you have heard of blockchain. And uh, we did a show. Uh, Christian and I did a show, uh, Bitcoin or Blockchain 101. So uh, you can reference back to that. I don't remember what date that was. What is Bitcoin? Uh, or <laughs> what, is Bitcoin? what is Blockchain? Cryptocurrencies use distributed ledger technology, DLT. And we've also done a show on that, distributed ledger technology, to remove third parties from their systems. DLTs are shared databases where transaction information is recorded. Uh, the DLT that most cryptocurrencies use is called blockchain technology. The first blockchain was designed by Satoshi Nakamoto for Bitcoin. A blockchain is a database of every transaction that has ever happened using a particular cryptocurrency. Groups of information called blocks are added to the database one by one and form a very long list. So blockchain is a linear chain of blocks. Once information is added to the blockchain, it can it can't it cannot be deleted or changed. Uh, it is it stays on the blockchain forever and to eternity until every last computer is smashed. Um yeah, er everyone can see it. Uh, the whole database is stored on a network of thousands of computers called nodes. So your computer, if you're on the network, it's called a node. New information can only be added to the blockchain if more than half of the nodes agree that it is a valid, um, it is valid and correct. This is called consensus. And you've probably heard the consensus uh, uh, conference. So I guess that's where they get the word consensus. It's a consensus. They they, they, yes, they agree. The idea of consensus is one of the big differences between cryptocurrencies and normal banking. At a normal bank, uh, transaction data is stored inside the bank. Bank staff makes sure that uh, no invalid transfers are made. This is called verification. Let's use one example. George owes $10 to both Michael and Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, George has only uh, has uh, only has ten U.S. dollars in the account. He decides to try to send ten dollars to Michael and ten dollars to Jackson at the same time. The bank bank's staff note that George is trying to send money that he doesn't have. They stop the transaction from happening. The bank stopped George from double spending, which is kind of fraud. Bank uh, banks spend millions of dollars to to stop double spending from happening. What is cryptocurrency doing about double spending and how do uh, cryptocurrencies verify the transactions? Remember, they don't have staff like the banks do. How does blockchain work? Well, transaction request, uh, they sent to the broadcast, uh, uh, broadcast to the network. Network verifies and records the transaction. Transactions approved. Uh, the information gets added to the block uh, on the existing blockchain. Cri cryptocurrencies Cryptocurrency transactions are verified in a process called mining. So you've heard the miners. Uh, this is what they're doing. They're not actual. They don't have a pick. They don't have a pick and an axe. They don't have a shovel. They don't have a beard. And well, I'm sure a lot of them had beards. Um, or donkeys sitting beside them. Yeah, donkey.
Little donkey. Uh, cryptocurrency mining uh, might sound like something you do with a shovel and hard hat uh, or donkey. And it's actually more uh, like accounting. Miners are nodes uh, and it's not the person, it's the computer. So yeah, so it doesn't have a beard, all right? Miners are nodes that perform a special task that makes transactions possible. I'll use an example uh, to show you how it works using the Bitcoin network. Okay, here we go back to George, and he's going to send Michael 10 Bitcoin. George announces that he is sending Michael 10 Bitcoin on the Bitcoin network. Miners take the information and encrypt it. The miner is the computer that takes that information and encrypts it. Uh, this is called hashing. Um, uh, it has nothing to do with hashtags either. To, uh, to this information, they add other transaction information to and hash that too. More and more information is added and hashed until there's enough to form a block. Uh, the miners now race against each other to guess the encrypted code or block hash uh, that would be given to the new block before it's added to the blockchain. The lucky miner that guesses the right code gets to add the new block to the blockchain. So it's just a guessing game. Now all the other nodes on the network verify the transaction information in the new block. Uh, they check the whole blockchain to make sure that the new information matches. If it does not, if it does, okay, if it does, the, the new blockchain val is valid and the winning miner can add the new block to the blockchain. This is called confirmation. Michael receives 10 Bitcoin from George. Uh, mining cryptocurrencies uses a lot of computer power, uh, electricity, it's plugged into your wall, sucking out your electricity. So miners are re rewarded for the work they do. Um, on the Bitcoin network, miners who confirm the new blocks of information are rewarded with 12.5 Bitcoin of new Bitcoin. This is why it's called mining instead of mining for gold or coal crypto miners are digging for new Bitcoins. Uh, I actually didn't know that they were rewarded with 12.5 Bitcoin. It's crazy. Uh, so what is the cryptocurrency mining for? It's the way cryptocurrency networks like Bitcoin verify and confirm new transactions. It stops double spending without the need uh, of trusted centralized account accounting like banks do. Cryptocurrency blockchains aren't secured by uh, trust or people, they are secured by math done by computers that has no intention of stealing anything. Math is, is, is on the up and up, it's square. It, uh, it, it'll never lie to you. For more information, check out my blockchain explained guide. So I guess uh, if you go here to bitgree.org, click this uh, um, uh, blockchain explained guide. Uh, he'll explain more to you. Now that you know how blockchains and mining crypto mining work. Next, I'll tell you how you can join a cryptocurrency network using cryptocurrencies. Whew. This is a long thing. Um, I'm not going to go through the rest of that. I think the, I think, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's, let's do this one. Um, using cryptocurrencies. Um, we we'll, we'll go, we'll do, let's do this. One. Okay. Using cryptocurrency isn't like using a fiat currency. Uh, you can't hold cryptocurrency in your hand. You can't open a cryptocurrency account. Cryptocurrency only exists on the blockchain. Users access their cryptocurrency using uh, codes that called uh, using codes called public and private keys. It's a bit like a sending an email. If you want to send somebody an email, you tell them your email address. And uh, if you want somebody to send you cryptocurrency, then you tell them your public key. So the public key is, is it, it's okay to share because it's only to receive money. You can't, you can't, um, can't steal money if you have somebody's public key. Uh, if you want to read your emails or send an email, you need to enter your email password. Uh, this is how the private keys work. Private keys are like passwords for only, uh, for cryptocurrency. Public keys can be seen Public keys can be seen by anyone, but private keys should only be seen by you. If there is one paramount detail you should learn from 
this what is cryptocurrency guide it's that you keep your private keys safe it is extremely important so uh, private and public keys are kept in wallets and i showed you uh, my my hard wallet crypto wallets uh, can be online offline software hardware or even paper yep you can you can actually print them out some can be downloaded for free or are hosted by websites others are more expensive for example hardware wallets can cost around hundred dollars which is uh, like the treasure that i just showed you uh, you should use several different kinds of wallets when you use cryptocurrency whoever has the private key and public keys owns the cryptocurrency so don't lose your wallet cryptocurrency is a pseudonym remember there's no way uh, to prove you own the cryptocurrency unless you have the keys to it it's not like a car even though you have the keys to it you still got to have your uh, your title i've told you um about how the first cryptocurrency was created and how it works i've also told you about cryptocurrency and how it's stored now let's look at some other cryptocurrencies that have been created since bitcoin um and litecoin so we'll just start off with litecoin um it's a lot like bitcoin but it's trans uh, transactions are processed four times faster so that's one of the problems that um it's one of the problems that you have when you're using when you're using bitcoin is it takes a while uh to verify uh the transactions it takes a while you can't like go to 7-eleven and expect to buy a, a slurpee with bitcoin you be there for 20 30 40 minutes you hold the line and uh, those guys coming in for their slurpees you, you make them wait a few minutes they're gonna get cranky as then then also with, at starbucks you you get in line in the morning behind somebody that has got to wait for a coffee <laughs> um i'm i'm not that guy uh so it, the transactions uh four times faster um and easier than bitcoin mining uh so users with less powerful computers can become miners so uh you want to mine bitcoin or litecoin you can do that ethereum uh uses even more advanced blockchain blockchain technology than bitcoin it's sometimes called blockchain 2.0 ethereum allows its users to to design and build their own decentralized applications or dApps on the blockchain if bitcoin wants to replace banks then ethereum wants to place everything else ethereum developers can build dApps uh, dApp versions of centralized apps like facebook amazon twitter even google the platform is becoming bigger than just a cryptocurrency so what is cryptocurrency when it's not real cryptocurrency anymore it's ethereum a platform that uses blockchain technology to build and host decentralized apps interesting fact Ethereum has quickly skyrocketed in value since its introduction in 2015 and is now the second most valuable cryptocurrency by market capitalization, increased by a value of 2,226% in just a year. A huge boon for early investors. IOTA, uh, it's a pretty special uh, cryptocurrency. It doesn't have a blockchain. IOTA uses a DLT called the tangle miners don't confirm new transactions uh, users do uh, when a user wants to make a payment using the tangle they have to verify and confirm two other users transactions first only then will their payment be processed um, so there's a there's a lot of stuff on here um, uh, that that you should that you should read um i encourage everyone to go here and, and kind of read this um so that's kind of uh that's what cryptocurrencies are in a nutshell um uh do, do some more research uh, google it if you're if you have a computer you obviously have a computer you wouldn't be seeing me right now or listening to my voice uh there's there's a lot on on the internet but i think uh you know it's if, you, if you're like me and you need people to tell you it's very hard for you to read stuff because i'm kind of dyslexic and you don't know how hard it was for me to just do this to read these I mean, you heard me mess up a few times but man i i'm not good at reading stuff man just not so i like for people to tell me and the reason that i could really do this is because i've read this a few times and kind of gone through it myself so uh do your do your homework uh, that's what they always say about about cryptocurrency and, and bitcoin and stuff do your homework so um 
this is uh, this has been a little special episode. I just wanted to throw out there. And um, if you have any questions, if you got any any uh, any questions for me, what what uh, you'd like to know, um, uh, drop me a line and uh, so like and subscribe, please. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell your dog. This is Crypto the Wonder Dog Show. Anyway, so uh, before we go. Um, uh, I'd like to uh, give a shout out to uh, one of our kind of sponsors here, Hollywood Hot Rods in Hollywood. If you got a hot rod or if you want a hot rod, if uh, you're into cars, this guy, Troy Lad, he is crazy with a hammer and a uh, wrench uh, making, making gold out of tin. Man, he can make the greatest uh, hot rods on the planet. Um, everyone, everyone who's someone has a hot rod built by Troy Lad. They are, uh, they've created a new show called The Royal Garage, uh, starring Troy Ladd and Courtney Hansen. That will be on the History Channel here coming up really soon. And um, I encourage everyone to watch that. If uh, you um, are more interested in the news of um, cryptocurrencies, um, there is a, let me go there real quick, um, bitnewstoday.com. Bitnewstoday.com. Uh, you're, it's uh, it's a great it's a great place. I like it because they uh, they also broadcast uh, the Crypto the Wonder Dog show here. Um, we've had a couple of uh, a couple of episodes that they have, they have transcribed and put up, and it was an, it was a compliment to other stories that they had on there. We put our own spin on it, Charlie and I. Uh, Bitnewstoday.com. Check it out. So that's kind of the news today for for Crypto the Wonder Dog. Uh, we've got some other shows coming up really soon. Hope you enjoy the show. And like I said, if you've got anything to say, uh, say it. I'm cool. All right. You guys have fun with the show? All right. Good talk today. And uh, we'll see you.